What's up guys? We are back with another McFarlane Toys review, taking a look at the latest in Warhammer 40k. We've got two figures to talk about today. So we've got the Blood Angel Hellblaster, which of course is a different take on a Space Marine, so similar but different territory to what we've seen already. And we've also got the Battle Sister. So this one is definitely a more unique figure for the line so far. Both of them come in the same style packaging. So you've got uh, kind of an oversized box because they are kind of oversized figures. They're there in the window, the 40K logo down there on the bottom. The side panels have some artwork and product shots of the figures. And then the back of the box has a single product shot for the figure inside, along with a cross sell for these two, as well as the artist proof sort of gray blank figures uh, that this line is also known for. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. So we're going to start with the Blood Angel Hellblaster, mostly because this guy is basically the same kind of figure that we got with the Intercessor, however many months ago that was. So if you're familiar with that guy, you kind of already know what to expect with this one. Granted, there are a number of little differences to make him stand out, not just the, the color scheme. So uh, as far as articulation goes, we've got a head that can swivel. He's got this weird neck system, so it's almost like the head sort of sits on a plate that's inside the collar, and it does move independently from the head itself. So you're actually moving this sort of plate that it sits on, and it goes up and down, which does work pretty well, honestly. I mean, it's not the greatest range of motion, but it does help a figure that would be so low to the collar that it wouldn't really be moving, be able to move on its own. Uh, arms go out at the shoulders. They do not go all that far. They really only go about that far just because of how big this thing is. It does have moving shoulder pads. So this is on a ball peg and it moves. Uh, you do have a almost sort of butterfly joint in there. You can swivel the arms. There is a bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows and they do get surprisingly very good range for such a big figure. Uh, you've got your standard uh, McFarlane ball hinges. So you've got up and down and then rotation. You send it whichever way you want. You've got a torso cut, a diaphragm cut. So he goes backwards, like really, really, really far. And then he goes forwards in conjunction with the waist too. And then he goes side to side pretty good. And then you can twist at the diaphragm, but you can also twist uh, at the waist. And this one is a little, a little harder to do, but you've got to, you know, get a good grip on it and you'll be able to twist at the waist and at the diaphragm there, which is really nice. I mean, again, it's a big monster figure. This is a big hunk of plastic, so it does work pretty well. Legs are where he's really limited. They really only go out about that far. Uh, they kick forward that far, which isn't all that great, but for a big guy, that's good enough. He is in a big monster suit of armor backwards. And then uh, you do have some shimmy at the thigh. It's not really a thigh cut or anything, but it does move a little bit. You do have double jointed knees and they go back about that far. And then we've got hinges, which are again, kind of limited. You can see why there is a little bit of a rocker in there. And then that's about it. So he is, he's kind of locked down when it comes to the legs, but with enough work, he's pretty easy to pose still. Uh, it is a big hunk of plastic. It's a big monster figure. It's a guy in a tremendously large bulky suit of armor. And honestly, for that purpose alone, I do think this does a pretty good job. Certainly there are other ways to maybe make him a little bit more mobile, give him a thigh cut uh, would be really nice. And then, you know, maybe figure out a way to get those ankles to move a little bit more. But otherwise, it does have a surprising range of motion at the torso, at the waist, and even at those elbows. They move far better than I ever expected they would. Personally, my main focus for this line is really the aesthetics. And it's not because they don't move all that well, because they kind of do move well enough for what they are. It's mostly because I just like the way these things look. And for being such large figures, I mean, they are... They are quite big, so, you know, just to give you an idea, real quick, here's a figure arts Goku. I mean, he's absolutely massive by comparison. For a $20 figure, you are getting a lot of plastic here, and I just think they look cool. I'm not the biggest Warhammer fan. You know, I've played some games uh, throughout its history in, in one capacity or another. I've never been any in any way in the tabletop side of things, but I've always loved a lot of the designs from the lore and from this game series. So I'm, I'm really excited to be able to get something like this. Uh, again, it's a big, big figure, and it translates really well into figure form. I think the overall color scheme is really nicely done. You do have some accents here and there. So like, you know, you've got this little, I don't even know what it is, this little blood teardrop almost that's on the, the armor. That's a new piece compared to the intercessor. You've got the emblem on the pauldron. That's a new piece compared to the intercessor. The chest piece has 
the emblem specific for the blood angels and then you've got you know this sort of little teardrop almost again i don't know what it is you do have the removable sort of backpack thing here so you don't it's an accessory i suppose if you want to consider it as one but who's not going to use that so you've got this it's not painted or anything and it's the same thing we saw with the intercessor but i think it looks really cool uh, and it's got a nice sculpt good detail on it overall the figures do have a great sculpt I mean, I think they look fantastic. And this guy does have a new head sculpt to go with this particular uh, version of a Space Marine. So it's a little bit more detailed in some respects. You've got sort of the dual nozzles on this side. You've got like this sort of cable that runs down across the face and a little bit more uh, paint applications as well. So you've got red eyes, more silver accents, things like that. It is still very similar to the Intercessor. And then here, here they are just to give you an idea uh, next to each other of what they look like. So they do have very differing color schemes. So you've got the red with the blue head, you've got the blue with the red head. And seeing them side by side, I'm curious now if this head would work on this body for someone who wanted to, to kit bash or anything. This head does not work on this just because the colors are different. They're decidedly different, but otherwise, that's not too far apart, I don't think. So you get an idea of what is uh, very, very much a similar figure. They are they are, and they aren't repaints because, you know, this has a different pauldron. They have different emblems, things like that, different head skulls. But a lot of the overall construction of this figure is very much the same, which I am perfectly fine with because, I mean, they're supposed to be very similar anyway. So I do think this is a really cool entry into the line. I was really happy with this figure, and it's nice to get something that's similar but still very different at the same time. And then as far as accessories goes, this big guy has just one, well, I mean, two if you want to talk about the uh, the stand that they all come with. Doesn't matter to me, but we've got one actual accessory and he's got this big massive gun, which I really do like. I think it's really cool looking just from a general perspective, but it's also incredibly large. I mean, this thing is very massive. Again, this is a much larger style figure or you know, a chunkier figure than most. So he does get an appropriately sized weapon. I think Sculpt Knot is really good. Uh, nice differing colors, paint applications. You've got sort of like a gunmetal color, little different hit of silver on it, blacks, and then you've got this sort of uh, bright tealy green blue color just to, just to sort of set it off a little bit. So Sculpt is really good and you know, what he makes up, what he doesn't have in terms of overall quantity, I think is made up for with a very nice looking sort of signature gun for this particular uh, Space Marine. And then for the Battle Sister, this is this is a figure that I wasn't really sure what to expect because we've got the, the Space Marines, you kind of know what's going on there, but this is a very different kind of figure. They are very different. They couldn't be more dissimilar, really, because that thing is a big chunk, kind of beefy brick of plastic. This is very much a different story. And honestly, save for maybe one thing, you know, I'm gonna always going to say it, they never do thigh swivels. Well, 98% of the time, they don't do thigh swivels on these figures. If she had that, this would probably be like, you know, top tier McFarlane figure because there's a lot going on with this one, uh, especially when it comes to articulation. But of course, overall sculpt and paint too. There's just a lot of cool stuff with this figure that I really like. So uh, as far as moving her around, you've got a head that can look up a little bit, not too, too far. She looks down really good. You do have a little bit of tilt and then you've got full rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They do rotate, but you've got uh, the pauldrons that get in the way. So you do have to watch those. There is a butterfly joint in there also. You've got a bicep swivel. It sort of sits underneath this sleeve right there. So you don't see it, but it is there. And then you've got the double jointed elbows, which go all the way up. So perfect range of motion there. You've got the standard uh, ball hinges at the wrist. And then for the torso, there's a diaphragm cut. So, well, it's not really a cut. It's basically, it's basically a torso that sits on top of a post that then goes down into the waist. And this ab section is not hard plastic. It's a rubber overlay that is connected to the tabard. So this piece here and the piece on the back is all the same piece of rubbery plastic that connects and sits over top of what would just be exposed joint work. There's no actual stomach underneath that. So she can go backwards, forward, tilt side to side, and then rotate at the top. But what, what this is, is it allows there to be sort of a crunch without their breaking up the sculpt and being exposed to joint work. This is the thing that Todd McFarlane said they were gonna try to do with Spawn, uh, the Kickstarter Spawn, and then they didn't do. So you've got more forward movement like that, and then you've got more tilt side to side. I don't know how 
super functional it really is, but at the same time, I appreciate the idea behind it because it does work well enough for a figure that is fully clad in armor that I'm, I'm happy with them not breaking up the sculpt for that. So, you know, that is a cool thing. The legs are where this figure does fall kind of short, though. That's as far as they go out. They don't go anywhere else. Just that far right there, which is uh, kind of a bummer. They kick forward all the way, so that's good enough. And then they do kick backwards slightly. You can shimmy at the thigh slightly, but it might as well not do anything. And then you've got double jointed knees. They go all the way back. And then we've got our ankles, which have the ball hinges, so they go up and back. There is a rocker there. There's also rotation at the joint itself. And then you've got a wicked toe hinge down there. So she is really well articulated. I like the idea behind that stomach um, waist situation. Again, it's not the most functional thing, but I appreciate the effort behind it to make that work instead of just chopping up that stomach. The only area that she really has any kind of problems for me is the hips, and that's pretty much the McFarlane MO at this point. She has very limited range out, and then she doesn't really have any, if at all, swivel. Visually, though, I'm very much on board with this figure because she looks cool. Again, I don't have a lot of attachment to the source material. I, I don't know anything about what the Battle Sisters are. I bought this because it looked cool, and I wanted something that was similar in scope, but very different from the Space Marines, and, and that's what this is. I think she looks fantastic. She's got her own little backpack. She's got, like, the... I guess that's their symbol, though, sort of like the... Makes me think of a Weeblo, uh, you know, a uh, Florida Lee kind of uh, a thing like from from Boy Scouts is what I think of when I see that more than anything else. Um, but I do think she does look really cool. Overall sculpt is really nice. Again, you've got the differing materials with the hard plastic armor pieces. You've got that soft sort of uh, stomach armor down there. But there's a lot of paint on this figure too. You've got the skulls that are painted. You've got all of the adornments and like the sort of ornamental stuff around her neck. The tubing at the top. More of the emblems on, on the pauldrons on both sides. And then of course that, that helmet which has the, the stark white with the red eyes, which I think look fantastic. They very much uh, pop against the overwhelming black that this figure brings to the table. But I think she looks really good. Again, no, no real issues to speak of. I like the overall design. I like the sculpt on this figure. I like the way it looks just from a, uh, a toy perspective without having really any attachment to it. And that's, that's a, big, a big winning point for me alone because again, no real attachment, but this thing looks fantastic. She's going to scale really well uh, with the with the Space Marines. And, you know, again, here is another comparison for a smaller scale figure. So there she is with Goku again, and she towers over him, which I think works really well. Uh, just from the, the idea that all of these troops and these Marines and Space Marines are kind of larger than life humanoid kind of characters. So this thing's going to have a nice presence on your shelf. It's got a really wicked set of armor, nice color palette, clashes, kind of complements each other very well at the same time. So it's a really cool looking figure on its own. And then of course, you know, throw her up against a Space Marine and you've got uh, the making for a nice little squad, depending on how, how deep you're going to go with building your ranks. And then as far as accessories goes for the Battle Sister, she does come with two, well, again, three if you want to count the stand, it's the same stand. Uh, but she gets a bolter and a chainsword, and this is not the same chainsword that came with the Intercessor. It is similar, but it's different, so it's a new sculpt entirely, really. Uh, she's got the the symbol for the, the Battle Sisters on it. So you've got that little like Weeblo uh, sort of thing there. And then it's it's gunmetal with a black hilt. And then she's got her big monster bolter here, uh, which does look really good. Again, it's got this, this symbol on there also. And you've even got like some cartridges down in the, uh, the magazine down there on the bottom. Not really any paint to speak of on these two in particular. Uh, it's mostly just the gray, the gray color and then you've got the black on the handle for, for the sword. But I'm really happy that she does have have two just to be able to have multiple things with this one. And then if you get a handful of them, uh, you're, you know, you're able to have them be a little bit different if you need them to have different accessories or you just want to sort of change things up. So a gun, a sword, and the aforementioned always important stand. So yeah, these are pretty solid figures. I, I would say these are kind of a no-brainer if you're into Warhammer just to get something like this at this scale. 
uh, that very much fits in with a lot of other figures because, again, these guys should be larger than your normal humans, and that's definitely what these guys are going to be, the Battle Sisters included. I think that just like with the original Intercessor that we got, the Blood Angel is also a really solid figure in terms of being able to move pretty well for being so big, but also looking fantastic. And the Battle Sister, I think, is just a really cool-looking figure. She moves really well except for those hips, but the rest of the figure is really well done. The overall sculpt and paint is really nice, and it's just a cool-looking female figure, too. She's going to go really well alongside the Space Marines, or if you're going to get sort of a, a subset of those, they're going to look really great in a squad on their own as well. So that's going to do it for this look at the McFarlane Toys Warhammer 40K Blood Angel Hellblaster and Adepta Sororitas Battle Sister. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.